quest for the Maroon Beret Part 2. Let's go. During the night navigation exercise, students need to cross several obstacles spread along a distance of between 1 to 12 kilometers. As a surprise exercise, groups of three students must carry a pole for approximately one kilometer. I like how they put in between 1 and 12 kilometers. <laughs> this guy, this announcer, kind of a vague thing. I'm not sure if we're talking about light, night land nav or what, but I can tell you guys, you guys have done it. Let me know in the comments. Nightland Nav is always a big shit show for everybody. I don't care what country you're from. Over the vast open plains of the Little Karoo, the second day of the parachute selection learning program has just dawned. Far off in the distance, the first challenge for the day awaits the group of worn out students, namely a 4.6 kilometer stretch of dirt road. They need to cover this distance in less than 40 minutes, wearing full battle dress and carrying an 84 millimeter ammunition container. The aim of this exercise is to test the student's general endurance and perseverance. You lift up the, the canister here, you run, you don't walk. <laughs> Not even a second walking, running all the way up until you reach the finishing point. Let me chime in on this one. You're carrying a ammo canister, or whatever, when you got the pack on, right? The rifle and this other thing that's oblong, right? That just doesn't sit right on you. It'd be a big pain in the ass. They're not carrying it too far, like three miles, whatever. But I've done that something similar with a 50 cal receiver, and I've said this before in videos. It becomes very awkward. It very quickly becomes heavy. I don't see if they've got rifles on the sling. It's not things whacking you around. Sacks hit in the back of your helmet, right? Your rucksack is hitting your helmet. You're all hunched over. It's definitely for the young man. It's a young man's game. All right, so let's take a look. We don't see any rifles. So that helps because think about this for a second. One guy's got it behind his head, holding it like he's going onto a cross. That works fine until you have the rifle swinging around, then it whacks you in the face. And you guys weren't into that before. That does suck. We take that back. He's got the rifle slung around his back. Now, if he sling that tight, it might be okay. It might stay there, and the muzzle might not come up and whack you in the nose. Did I just see unexploded ordnance? Let's go back a notch here. All right, so look at this. It looks like some sort of mortar or something on the side of the road. Looks like there's a bullet hole through it. Don't know if that's for effect or not, but uh, if it is, it's a pretty good effect. can't go anymore. I'm tired, really tired. But okay, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. I can come try again sometime. Yeah. Wow. You know, at first, the first sentence he said, I can't go anymore. I was about to rag on the guy. He said, yeah, I'm tired. I'll just keep going. It's not the end of the world. And that's the right attitude. Not just in this video, right? I'm not trying to be Dr. Phil on you. But it's not the end of the world. If you look at things in that fashion, you're not dying. It makes things easier when they suck, right? Whether it's the Maroon Beret quest or whether it's getting up at a sucky job at four in the morning to drive a dump truck, <laughs> you know? While others still have a long walk ahead of them, the first student to make it in time arrives at the finishing line. Come on, come on. The aim of the boxing exercise is to test the general aggressiveness of each student. This exercise also affords students the opportunity to rest and prepare for their next challenge. Don't kick on the box. Diving, you are allowed. Don't hold, don't kick. 
When someone is on the ground already, don't hit him. Wait for him to stand up again. Is that clear? When you say a hard fight is coming to you, you just go out town. <laughs> I will give you my... This guy's a real character, huh? All these rules are funny amongst the different services. So let's just say you got somebody down in the American military. Maybe you punch next to their head into the dirt, right? Or you take the heel of your boot next to their head in the dirt. You know, you always have a killing blow, right? You know, over-dramatizing. But sure they do something similar. I think it's good because a lot of these guys in the military, women included, have never done something like this, never been in a fist fight. You know, I think that's an important element in life. Like, if you haven't been in a fist fight, broken up with a girl, gotten broke up on, <laughs> and been hung over drunk, you really haven't lived yet, right? And permission to hammer you on the ground. Looks like some pretty good boxers in this bunch. They're swinging for the fences, but a couple of these guys like they have it in them to be a boxer at one point. Hey, if the army doesn't work out, maybe they could become a box. Hell, I don't know. Now, that kind of stuff doesn't look like much. And now it's sort of in vogue, right, to do this high intensity or whatever the hell they call it, this new training where you do with a tire, a boulder. Why is that good? If you guys have done it, you can attest to this. It's not just doing it with a weighted bar where it's made to be grabbed. You're doing it with the, this marble piece. And you got to have good grip strength because if you drop it, it falls on you. There's no spotter. This kind of stuff where you incorporate a lot of things that are practical, too. Are you going to be pressing up a piece of rock? No. Are you going to have to use that strength for something else? Maybe an ammo can or, you know, fill in the blank. It's a good exercise. It's good for them. And if they drop it on themselves, they're not going to die, probably. But they won't forget it. That means they're resting. I don't know what is happening. Nine. The purpose of subjecting students to battle situation exercises is to test their perseverance and teamwork under unfavorable conditions. The aim is to create an uncomfortable situation, one that soldiers can normally expect during a battle scenario. You know, Captain Obvious here, uncomfortable, unfavorable shitty situations let me be more descriptive well you're doing something that you can't just say you know what i'm gonna cut out early guys that go to starbucks and lay down and watch netflix yeah it's a change for a lot of people right so i think the way he described it a lot of euphemisms you know they're gonna dig a hole sleep in the hole and they're gonna learn very quickly about how to have drainage in the hole what it's like to have bugs bite you at night, what it's like if you're scared of things that go bang in the night. You know, it's a good experience. All these guys are young. That's the thing. If you're older, what the hell? It's no big deal, right? But if you're a young guy and haven't experienced this, now some of these guys that have, you know, been camping, not camping in a tent or an RV, but been camping for real under the stars, or maybe used to this kind of stuff, but some of them, it's the first time. And that will last throughout the night. During this selection program, soldiers will have to dig trenches. All right, now they're cheating. They don't have an e-tool. So an e-tool, obviously a little tiny shovel and a trenching tool. They got a handle on this one. Makes it a little easier, but the ground does, does look like some pretty hard-ass clay. So those e-tools, Google that if you don't know what it is. 
they are hard to get anything done, especially if you get, dig down somewhere. Let's just say it's clay on top. And you get down further. It's limestone or rock. Might as well just give that idea up. Students who give their cooperation will be favored by being given extra sleeping time, whereas those who don't will Pick only axe, receive cheating. two hours of sleep. During this battle situation exercise, members can withdraw upon own request or be withdrawn if they fail to contribute sufficiently. The expressions on their faces speak volumes about how exhausted these students are after two wearisome days and two nights of little to no sleep. While some may still have a smile ready, others don't seem to think there's much left to smile about. <laughs> These helmets all cockeyed it makes me laugh. Now, I would say, let's just say they're fine, the instructors with your helmet being all wonky. When you start running and your helmet's loose, it starts cracking you around, you can't see. You can learn very quickly to tighten it up unless you want that thing sliding all over your head. Now, maybe the straps are too big for some of the guys. I don't know. It looks like some of them have it right. and other ones, it looks like they're John Wayne in the movie The Battle of Iwo Jima. It's like a pretty good O course. You know, they're doing it at a pretty quick pace. Um, looks like it's through the natural terrain. You know, it's not excavated out where it's more of a competition. It seems like these guys are getting good training. I don't know how much there is. Esprit de corps, patriotism. How many of these guys, you guys let me know in the comments, join because they want to or join because they not that they have to, but it's a job, right? It pays the bills. I went in the military for a couple of reasons. I did have patriotism and a family history, but it also paid the bills. Like I got a college education out of it, GI Bill. It was a good way to grow up. So I'm not commenting on them in a disparaging way. I'm asking the question because a lot of people get hung up with patriotism. That's what they think it is. Usually a multifold parts to this decision making for 17 18 year old signing a contract You know, I've never seen that one as an obstacle in an O course, but that's probably one of the more practical obstacles I've ever seen. We have to get in the back of a deuce and a half, right? So a big truck, what we call them. You got to climb through and get over it. That's probably one of the more practical ones because that's a typical height you're going to get into. It's going to be something you're jumping in and out of in a combat situation kind of thing. Probably not, but it's probably the most practical thing. You know, in the road, you have to climb over it. Makes a lot of sense. You don't have to spend millions of dollars to make a good O course. It's just a message. Can I get a copy of this movie? From Tuesday until now. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> then you fail. <laughs> it's only hours now left. We left with hours. But for an unfortunate few, fate doesn't have even a single second to spare. Go that side. Go there. We don't compromise even one second. Well, I like that. They, they don't compromise even one second, right? And then we have a lot of these social justice programs where everybody wins, everybody gets a trophy. But they did set a standard, right? They said, here's the time. If you don't make it, I'm sorry. Maybe there's another job for you outside of the military. I think it has to be that way, otherwise it becomes too many exceptions, right? You get a guy who says, well, I didn't feel good that day, or it was some religious holiday, or whatever. I get it, but at some point there has to be a standard, because as we all know in the real world, money changes hands, things happen. 
And there's a standard set on how these <laughs> commerce is done. In this case, how you get selected to receive the maroon beret. Got another word for it, but I don't think it'll be suitable. <laughs> you think it's fair? By one second. <laughs> In the heat of the afternoon on the third day of the quest for the Maroon Beret, the remaining students embark on a 15-kilometer route march. They must complete this walk in a time of 2 hours and 45 minutes, while carrying an additional load of 26 kilograms worth of equipment with them. This time of day, the little Karoo is at its harshest, with the rocky terrain underfoot and the sun burning mercilessly upon one's back. Even if they were allowed to do so, these students wouldn't converse with one another. They simply don't have the energy left to waste on anything else but focusing on taking the next... There's that mortar again or another one. You guys from South Africa let me know. Is that from some wars that happened years ago? I know there's been several and I won't try to get into it on this video, but I, it's the second mortar I've seen on the side of the road. Maybe it's, like I say, there for effect. They cleared it from a old minefield or battlefield or something. Step on this seemingly never-ending stretch of dirt road. And then, at long last, almost three hours and a few blisters later, the students reach the finishing line. There is now only one final back-breaking exercise standing between them and ultimate victory. But before they can embark on this final long walk to glory, they need to have their blisters taken care of. Now, what do you guys do for blister treatments? Anybody who's walked any long durations in boots, you know you're going to get them. We used to always just pop them. At night, clean them really good and then move on the next day. Now, check in the description. I have a video about taking care of your feet in the military. But now they have mole skin and all sorts of other new skin and things you can put on top of them. We never used any of that stuff. I'm sure it would work well. I found the best cure for a blister. My pop it, clean it, fresh socks, and go on your way. When you're done humping, give your feet a break, hopefully for a while, and they'll heal up and you'll build a callus and the next time you don't get the blister. You may carry the stature only by hand. Four people at a time. Nothing else. Three will be roaming. Your stature will drop down to five. Then leave it up to the instructor. They will give you something else. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, yes, yes. I cannot hear you. Do yes, you understand? Major. Yes, Major. Okay, we will see. Two hours, 15 minutes. Distance, 12 kilometers. This is a cut-off exercise. Ready? Stay on the road. Go. Wow, now that's a pretty good qualifier, disqualifier. So if the stretcher touches the road... The entire team will be disqualified. Now, let's qualify that. <laughs> Hopefully, disqualified means you're gone. Because if you set a standard that high, people tend to live up to it. Now, you may have an exception if somebody falls, right? You may make that, but you're not going to tell somebody that because it does le level up the expectations. So people tend to do better when they're held to a higher standard. <laughs> With the stretcher weighing in at a whopping 75 kilograms, this final battle situation exercise will be an equalizer. The ultimate test for endurance and teamwork, this is what being caught in the middle of a battle is all about. Pushing oneself beyond your limits may very well mean the difference between life and death. As if the physical challenges are not hard enough to deal with, these men are also constantly being challenged on a psychological level. <laughs> drop it down! Drop it! You're standing! You're standing! Put it down so that I can get my numbers. 
You know, so you have that instructor behind him saying, put it down so I could take my numbers. Does he want you to quit? No. But he'd rather have you quit here, and I don't care what your job is. If you're in the Maroon Berets, you're a paratrooper, or you're an airplane mechanic, you want someone to quit before you actually need them. You'd rather have 10 people that are trying, putting out, than you would 20 people, and you've got 10 of them that are jackasses not putting out. They're just dangerous. You guys ever worked with somebody? I don't care what job it is. When you've got somebody who goes on vacation and things work smoother when they're gone, it's like they're more of a hindrance than a help. Three quarters of the way and the men are spent. Worn down to the bone by the long hours <laughs> of being sleep deprived he looks and pushed to their physical and mental limits, they are struggling to function as a group. At times, the only synergy left is the resolution not to let go of the stretcher. We are not worried. I'm worried if the stretcher is not moving. If you don't want to be here, bring the number. Let's go. Bring the I like this guy, this instructor. He does give a shit. But here's what happens on these deals. And you guys tell me in the comments if you've experienced this. So... Now, uh, whatever arm you're holding it gets tired, your grip strength, your tricep, or your uh, trap muscles get tired, right? Then you get guys aren't putting out, so you're carrying more, they're carrying uneven. God forbid you get a real tall or short guy the way a thing goes. What happens is, so all that's realistic, right? But then you get the complainers, like that their job's harder than yours is. And I comment in a couple other videos about complainers, how they're a cancer, and if you get around them, and I can I was guilty of this, you'll start getting the cancer of the complainer. I don't see it with this group so far. It looks like they're just humping along, doing a good job. Come on, gents. With dusk now fast approaching, tempers flare up as the contributions of team members are being quantified. I'm changing that side, that side. I'm I can tell you a little hack here, a cheat. I take 550 cord, tie it into a noose, put it around my arm, and then wrap the 550 cord around the object, and so it would make a tight grip. And then I have to grip it as hard, but it use my wrist as somewhat the strong point. Don't know if that was allowed. Never did this exact exercise. But I learned that from weightlifting before I went in. And so I do that on some of these long things with the grip strength. I just needed a break. So if I could have that thing pulling against my wrist and not my hands all the time so my grip strength didn't go away, that was a total hack. You could do it with better things. This 550 cord does dig in a little bit. If you had some of that bull tape, as we call it, which is like a flat nylon string type of thing that'd work even better but anything to give your hands a break because sometimes they just get spent i'm changing everyone here hey. now you think i'm a super c and i'm superhuman i also get tired <laughs> hey guys you look tired you look tired easy stop this thing bring it here <laughs> then finally the finishing line is in sight with their morale instantly boosted, the exhausted men break out in a song. They are the first group to arrive at the finishing line. And you look at those guys, and if you've ever been there before, you can appreciate it. Where you probably were a light sleeper before you went in, and now you can sit up against your pack or your buddy's knees, right? So let's say they got their knees in their chest. You lean against that, his knees. Hopefully he's got something to lean against. Or you take turns doing that, just so you can catch some Z's. And even this point, since they don't have to go on, if they had to go on, I'd say no sleep, because that'd be worse. But if they can catch half hour sleep, they'll feel a lot better. Now, they will wake up with their feet swollen and feeling like shit, achy, breaky, because they sat down, the blood flow stopped. Time for some shut-eye. When one's body and mind is this exhausted, any position will do. One after another, the other groups arrive at the... 
Yeah, when you see guys fall asleep when they're like this, let me know if you guys have seen this. Guys will start twitching, like almost not convulsing, but twitching quite a bit where their nerves, I don't know what the physiological component is, but you see them where they twitch quite a bit when they're sleeping and they'll barely be asleep when they'll start twitching. Anybody who's medical, let me know in the comments because I never understood it, but I've done it. I woke myself up once. I was kind of dozing off. And I start twitching, but I'd seen people do it and I didn't realize it, that I was doing it until one time I dozed off in a situation similar. I just twitched so hard I woke myself up. The finishing line. I've never been so like this before. Honestly. Oh, sure. But I'm glad we're back. How was it? I underestimated it before I came. It was tough. Honestly, I thought it was pretty tough, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure no one else can disagree. Bring it on. Good for him. At last you are here. I suppose, yeah, bring it on. I didn't come this far to give up. Oh. Yeah, it was hard, but at least we made it. And it is really worth it. Now he says really worth it, right? Is the job worth it? Probably not, right? You do your time, you get out. But they accomplished something they didn't think they could do. They probably were humping that stretcher. At one point, he's like, man, I could be home with my buddies, drinking a cold beer. Why am I doing this shit? So it makes a huge difference for these really young people because they haven't done a lot. And further and further we go along in time, the less people have done physically, I'm talking about. You know, if you're spending a lot of time behind a computer in an air conditioning you haven't suffered a little bit. And that would be suffering by today's standards, doing physical labor, doing something. So they have accomplished a lot because they got through probably a mental hurdle at points in time. They're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And they did it. And then they go, okay, not a big deal. Huh? That one, it was separating men from boys. Hey. Rid of the weakness. I can't even talk. <laughs> well, how do you train the easier you fight? That's about it. Last. At last, these soldiers have proven to themselves that pain is temporary, but pride is indeed forever. Tell me what experience in your life you thought you were going to quit at. You just push through and you look back and go, why was I going to quit? But in the moment, it seemed absolutely terrible. It's got to be something. I don't care if it's the military. I don't care if it's you studied hard for an exam. Now you're going to fall asleep, but you kept going. And now you look back on it and go, that wasn't a big deal. But in the moment, it seems like the world's going to end. I'll see you in the next video.